Discuss the value and importance of standardized testing in evaluating student achievement and evaluating teachers, how it should be used, um, just anything on that line. Well, testing gives us, gives us basically an idea of where the students are going, how the school district is performing, and how the teachers are performing. And those are very important. But also it's important how well the student does in the classroom. How well they read, how well they write, how well their performance in math. Those things are also important. I mean, we just can't go 100% testing and not look at the performance of our kids in the classroom. So yes, performance, we need something as far as a guide. How this school district is performing. If we did not have that type of testing and performance, we would never know that half of the student, half of the uh, schools in TUSD are C and below. And we would never have known that 12 are in the D category. So it is important. I'm a huge skeptic of, of standardized testing. I think it is uh, the enemy of what we really ought to be teaching, which is critical thinking. Uh, standardized testing uh, drives the teachers uh, inevitably to teach to the test, which is not teaching at all. It's, it's rote memory, and we don't need it and don't want it in the schools. I also think it is a terrible idea to, to uh, evaluate teachers based on standardized testing. I, I cannot imagine a more unfair, unwarranted, and unreasonable way to measure a, a teacher's classroom performance. So I, I am not a fan of standardized testing. I think it's a big mistake, and I would very much like us to move completely away from that. No child left behind. Oh. I guess I could have stolen five seconds. <laughs> no Child Left Behind originally passed with strong bipartisan support, and the reason was the common recognition that some school districts in the U.S. were performing terribly by their students, and there were school districts in Arizona with much worse student achievement than TUSD. The purpose of NCLB was to call those districts out, and it did have that effect. It forced some, it shone the light on some districts that were really doing badly, and standardized testing was part of that. But as with many things, there was a real problem and a solution overshot. And so NCLB led to a regime now in which we have overemphasis on standardized tests, and we need to reform that and correct that. But it's also important not to overshoot again and completely get rid of it. It does perform a useful service, and we just have to calibrate the role which it performs. Should we wait for the fun trolley to go by, or should we go? Uh, do I sound loud enough? Thank you. <laughs> okay, here we go. So, uh, I, when I was a kid, I took the CAT test, the California Aptitude Test. And that test was designed to, to tell the teachers where I needed a little bit more help. The opposite happened with NCLB with this over, over Saturday testing, where now we're punishing school districts, we're punishing teachers, and we're punishing students because we're, we're, test, we're, we're teaching to the test. Again, critical thinking skills. But the issue then is, if, if in fact this kind of testing is, is shining the light on certain districts that need help, then it should be funded. It should not be unfunded mandates. If you have the funding to provide the support to help those students, to help those teachers and those schools and those districts, then, then Saturday testing might work to identify where those issues are. Going back to what we used to do when public education was working, I think the idea then is unfunded mandates equal stuff that's going to not be very successful. So I don't necessarily support standardized testing, and I think I, I'd love to be able to teach to, to teach kids how to, how to think, not what to think. I'm not a fan of standardized testing, and I'm less a fan of high-stakes testing. I think that Nickleby, our so-called educational reforms, have reformed our thinking about public education. We used to think it was fabulous, and now we think it's miserable. Do you call that a reform? I don't. Um, it was developed, standardized testing was developed for, for one thing, which was standardization. And I submit to you that if our testing regime somehow failed 
um, Anglo-wealthy men, if they were the ones who had test anxiety and if they were the ones who consistently brought down the testing scores, we would not be talking about standardized testing. They do not test what they pretend to test and it gets left out because it gets talked about as sort of a bureaucratic level thing. My experience is at the site level and at the site level of the schools that I've been at, there are an awful lot of kids for whom that testing is not at all relevant. But I could start out with a question that I heard recently. Some third graders were given a writing prompt, third or fourth graders were given a writing prompt. What do you do on a foggy day in Arizona? Can you guys answer it? <laughs> Here's the thing, um, with standardized testing, I, you know, it's been mentioned I'm the only candidate that has actually taken a testing test, it's still relevant, and I believe that constituents and business leaders, I mean, for example, the private business that I work for, they do look at this information, and I really strongly believe that this is not going to go away. Standardized testing should be a mild post and assessment, and to be honest, in my world, I believe it's a minimum bar. If we were at the higher level that we need to be, then we wouldn't be worrying about these type of standardized testing. Saying get rid of standardized testing is not tackling the root issue. The root issue is our curriculum, the quality of instruction, and the evaluation of all of our leaders on our campus. And that's what we should be tackling and making sure that we exceed that minimum bar and not have to worry about standardized testing. Testing is going to be a part of our life, and I've talked about being tested to death when I was a TUSD student, S SATs, ACT, the ASVAP, the quarterly, weekly, all of this stuff, that's a part of our life. Well, and, and I'm a, a candidate on the board that has given the AIMS test at a variety of levels, and I'm also the candidate who remembers what it was like teaching without, without the pressure, and I know what my instruction was like. My students are not learn they're, they're not better now because of the tests that's for sure we definitely have time to critically think to uh, what children to express themselves to learn how to express themselves so it has taken so much time it is really really manipulated how we you know who we help and why we help them how long we help them so we definitely need a board i mean it's not going away it is it is we have to understand that it's the game we're in we need a board who understands that, who understands what a C means, because it's not necessarily that the label changes all the time. You know, it was maybe approaching, and now it's a, it's an A, or it was, it's a, it's a C, and it used to be highly performing. We have to understand the politics of how these scores are used and manipulated, and we have to protect our teachers from not just only focusing on that. 